The new evangelization. Much money is spent on it. Much effort and time is spent on it to tell us what it is. But to simply say, it is the sharing of the simple truth that God loves us. That God has saved us from our sins. And that God is calling each one of us to eternal happiness and loving him now so as to prepare to do so for eternity. When you and I, when we want to tell people about God as he has revealed himself to us in Jesus Christ, What is the first thing that we say to them? It's most likely that God is love, or that God loves everyone, or that God loves us. This is simply and always true. You and I were given life by God because he loved us into being. He loves us because he gives us new life by living as members of his body in the church. He loves us because he gives us the strength, the grace, to live out the law of his love. He loves us because he calls us to live with him in love for eternity in heaven. So how do we reconcile today's gospel passage with the truth that God is love? The Holy Spirit tells us in 1 John that God is love. But today Jesus tells us, Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. It seems that in this passage, Jesus is saying that there's some sense, something unloving that God does. But that is not true. God loves us always. And a part of how he does this is by bringing about our separation from things in this life. Namely, our sins and our attachments. As disciples of Jesus Christ, we live in the world, but we are not of the world. We do not live for the world but for the love of God in eternity. Our sins and our attachments to the things of this world are what keep us weighed down and with a small horizon. Any sin that we commit results in a further attachment to the world. The little lie brings us to bigger lies, which bring us to live out an alternate reality. The failure to help poor with our our time and the money we have leads us to live for ourselves and trying to possess the next piece of technology or the newest fashion. Jesus has come to bring about our separation from our sins. He came to earth to set us afire with his love, so that we might no longer be dragged down by our worldly sins. And we also have attachments. There are many things to which you and I are attached in this life. We call these my way of doing things. Or maybe we're attached to my chunk of time during the day that is my internet time. Or maybe we're attached to our money that I use to treat myself to things I deserve for my hard work. In themselves, these attachments are not necessarily sins, but they do prevent us from growing in God's love. Jesus has come to separate us from longing for the things of this world and to seek the fullness of his love in eternity. One of the effects of our sins and our our, our attachments, or one of the outcomes of this, is that we lower our expectations of who God is and what he has done for us. Our sins and attachments, they make us content with checking spiritual boxes and living by the letter of the law. We underestimate how deep and long and high God's love is for us. The result is, is that when you and I hear St. Paul telling us about a life in the Holy Spirit, about a life being filled with all the fullness of God, there's a part of us that doubts that it is true. And And sometimes we only hear these as pietistic words. You and I are temples of the Holy Spirit. The saints are the witnesses that we can live a life consumed by the love of God. They have lived in the way that we are meant to live. They have gone to where we are meant to go. When St. John of Capistrano was imprisoned as an ambassador for the city of Perugia in the 15th century, it was there in that prison that he thought seriously about his soul. He saw that the worldly life he was living was not the fullness of what God had planned for him. After his imprisonment, he became a Franciscan priest and became a powerful instrument of God's love. He realized that God wanted to accomplish far more in him than he could have asked or imagined. 
It is time for you and I to come and realize that God is able to accomplish far more than we all ask or imagine. It is time that we allow him to set us on fire and to accomplish what he seeks to do through us.